Producer surplus describes the difference between the amount of money at which sellers are willing to sell a product and the amount they actually receive by selling it at the market price. We can calculate this producer surplus by following a simple four-step process. First, we draw the supply and demand curves. Second, we find the market equilibrium. Third, we connect the price axis and the market equilibrium. And fourth, we calculate the area of the lower triangle. Let's start with step one, drawing the supply and demand curves. Calculating producer surplus always starts with a supply and demand diagram that shows the quantity on the x-axis and the price in US dollars on the y-axis. That's where we'll draw our supply and demand curves. To illustrate this process, we'll use a simple example, the market for candy bars. Let's assume that the demand function for candy bars is quantity demanded equals minus 2 times price plus 16, and the supply function is quantity supplied equals 2 times price. Now the first thing we need to do to draw our supply and demand curves is to find at least two points on each curve. To do that, we can simply plot two random prices into both functions, solve the resulting equations for quantity demanded or quantity supplied respectively, and plot the results in our supply and demand graph. Then we literally just have to connect the dots and draw two straight lines through those points to get the supply and demand curves. Let's pick $2 and $6 as our random prices and calculate the corresponding quantities. If we plot those numbers into the supply and demand functions, we find that at the price of $2, the quantity demanded equals 12 candy bars and the quantity supplied is 4 bars. Meanwhile, at a price of $6, the quantity demanded is 4 candy bars and the quantity supplied adds up to 12 bars. Now we can simply plot these four combinations in our graph and draw one line through the two ordered pairs of the supply function and another line through the two ordered pairs of the demand function to get the supply and demand curves. Okay, let's move on to step two, finding the market equilibrium. The market equilibrium is located at the intersection of the supply and the demand curve. That's where supply equals demand and the market clears. To find that spot, we first have to equal the supply and the demand function and solve for P. This gives us the equilibrium price. Then we can plug this number back into the supply function and solve for Q to get the equilibrium quantity. In our example, the equilibrium condition can be written as minus two times price plus 16 equals two times price. If we solve this for P, we find that the equilibrium price is 4 US dollars. That means at a price of $4, the market is in equilibrium and there is no pressure on the price to move up or down. Now, if we plug this number back into the supply function, we find that the equilibrium quantity is 8 candy bars. Or in other words, when the market is in equilibrium, 8 candy bars can be sold at a price of $4 each. Alright, now on to step 3, connecting the price axis and the market equilibrium. If we look at our supply and demand graph, we can see that the market price is usually not the lowest possible price at which a good or service could be sold. That means there are at least some sellers who would be willing to sell their product at a price below the actual market price. These sellers can now earn producer surplus equal to the market price minus their individual willingness to sell. We can illustrate this by drawing a horizontal line between the market price on the y-axis, which is $4 in our case, and the market equilibrium. That way, we can divide the area between the supply and demand curves into two triangles. One triangle above the market price and another one below. The area of the lower triangle represents the sum of all individual producer surpluses, which is equal to the total producer surplus. This brings us to our fourth and final step, calculating the area of the lower triangle. The universal formula to calculate the area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. We can use this formula to calculate the area of our lower triangle as well. That means we pick one side of the triangle as the base, multiply it with its height, and divide the result by 2. However, please note that this formula only works with linear supply curves. Other types of supply curves require a more complex formula. With that being said, if we apply this to our example, the easiest way to calculate the area of the lower triangle is to pick the line between the market price and the equilibrium as the base. The reason for this is that the height must be perpendicular to the base, which means there must be a 90 degree angle between them. Therefore, whenever you do have a 90 degree angle already, it's best to use one of those sides as the base and the other one as the height. In our case, that means the base of the triangle is 8 and its height is 4. If we plug this into the formula, we find that the area of the triangle is 8 times 4 divided by 2, which is equal to 16. Or in other words, the total producer surplus in our candy bar example is $16. So, let's sum it up once again. Producer surplus describes the difference between the amount of money at which sellers are willing to sell a product and the amount they actually receive by selling it at the market price. We can calculate producer surplus by following a simple four-step process. First, we draw the supply and demand curves. Second, we find the market equilibrium. Third, we connect the price axis and the market equilibrium. And fourth, we calculate the area of the lower triangle. And that's how you calculate producer surplus.